everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to ChasingCinema.com or our official YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Toronto, recapping the final day of CinemaCon 2018. This video specifically is going to be recapping the 20th Century Fox presentation. Now, CinemaCon is over, but all of my coverage is going to be available. Click that white eye, you can see all the different studio presentations that I covered. And in the next couple days, I'm gonna be uploading some interviews, most likely in a day. I shouldn't say a couple days, because I'm gonna try to get that up as soon as possible uh, with Anna Kendrick, Paul Feig, um, Jodie Foster, and some other big names that attended CinemaCon, so make sure to keep a lookout for that. Uh, but I'm going to recap the 20th Century Fox presentation right now. So, um, this presentation, like the that of Universal, wanted to be a little bit more entertaining, wanted to be a little bit more uh, fun. So it started off with a classic movie dance, you know, top hats, uh, all these women took the stage. Uh, on the screen, there was, a, there was a bunch of red lettering with, you know, light bulbs in them, not making out what they were going to say, just really zoomed up stuff. They're doing their dance, and lo and behold, it is for Deadpool 2. Um, everyone got a kick out of it. It was just a little dance. All the girls ran back. Then it cut to a, a video in which Deadpool was in full costume. Ryan Reynolds doing the voice. Um, one of the execs who needed to be there was drunk, drunk and passed out on the bed. And Deadpool's explaining that it's all because they party too hard. And you know he wakes them up, and the guys in the the executive is in the uh, greatest showman costume, and all of a sudden Hugh Jackman walks in, and you know everyone had a really big pop because Hugh Jackman and Deadpool got to kind of communicate and talk for a little bit and and crack up about Vegas. It was fun, uh, you know. Deadpool, of course, being raunchy and in your face, made a joke about everyone there. You know, first of all, he thanked all the exhibitors who was going to be playing Deadpool too, all the movie theaters. If you don't know, CinemaCon is the official. Uh, convention for NATO, the National Association for Theater Owners. This convention, while filled with movie news, is actually for movie theater owners, so also known as exhibitors. And uh, of course, he made the joke uh, that had everyone rolling, uh, enjoy your excuse to cheat on your spouse on the company's dime. Uh, so of course, you know, he was raunchy, he was uh, racy, and a great way to start the presentation. Uh, they also showed... Um, Footage, a new trailer for Deadpool 2, which looked like a blast. Uh, it channeled a lot of comedy and some really great action pieces. One in particular was Cable uh, and Deadpool pretty fairly close to each other. And uh, Cable is shooting at him and Deadpool is with his swords ap appearing to be dodging them all. Uh, but at the end, he of course looks and there's plenty of holes in his body. Um, it also had Deadpool... Uh, and his friend auditioning for his new superhero group, which of course we all know is going to be uh, the main focus for the upcoming film. And uh, there was a really great joke that really stood out to me, though. Um, you know, he's fighting Deadpool, and all of a sudden he goes, uh, something along the lines of, um, oh man, are you from the DC Universe? You're just so dark. You know, got a huge laugh from everyone. Of course, Deadpool, uh, the first film making fun of a lot of superhero films, I'm sure this movie is not going to hold back, particularly to DC, just because uh, everyone would call it out for that. Um, overall, a great way to start. You know, Deadpool 2 looks like a blast. Everyone really enjoyed the first Deadpool. Uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it like everyone else did, but I thought it was still solid. Uh, and of course, the sequel looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Moving on, 20th Century Fox's is presentation, though, ha was a bit of emotional. I mean, they did mention the upcoming possible transition in the fact that uh, there's going to be the merger. Of course, they're talking about the 20th Century Fox-Disney merger. So there was some kind of emotions. There was a lot of reflection in this presentation, maybe because we don't know if uh, the film uh, the film side of 20th Century Fox would be returning to CinemaCon because of their properties going to... Di I mean... They, they, they really kind of looked at the fact that there was going to be a lot of change in the upcoming year. So they addressed that, but very subtly. But we could just tell the emotion, the tone of everything in that presentation. So to kind of highlight that, um, they mentioned that they led the year in Academy Awards with 27 total in 2017. And they were also talking about the fact that they were, uh, you know, they were a real standout. They took a risk in the 70s with a film called Star Wars. You know, they were really pointing out some of their great stuff. They reflected on The Greatest Showman success. And um, then they showed this really great montage. I mean, a hell of a montage. 
you know, even though you feel like you've seen every possible montage of all the classic movie moments, usually there's one that still blows you away. And in this one, they really focused on focusing on their legacy and it celebrated their, quote, 80 years of uncompromising cinema, end quote. Um, then, uh, a swerve, and, and one thing we didn't get from any other presentation, is we talked about another company that uh, 20th Century Fox is going to be involved in, in which way, uh, called Control Movie, C-T-R-L Movie, in which uh, is an interactive way for moviegoers to watch films. So, very much like the Telltale Game series, Audiences will be in a theater watching a film, and as choices arise in the film, audiences are prompted, and they use either their smartphone or the app or whatever, that fully wasn't detailed, to choose which direction they want the film to go. Now, there are a few other movie companies trying to do this, but obviously this is their version. You know, I will say, you know, it was obviously advertising footage, so it made all the transitions seem seamless, so whether if you chose... Um, character A to punch character B or walk away from character B. Those are the two choices, for instance. It looked you only have like 10, 15 seconds to choose. And it looked like both, see, because they showed us both versions. And seemingly, you wouldn't even notice like there was a pause. It was, it was pretty clever. Um, you know, I think that there could be some interesting ways... Uh, how that would end up working. I think you need to get some really talented directors. And I mean, we, we've seen it work in the Telltale game series. You know, giving the option is a really cool way to explore games and explore uh, experiences, visual experiences. But you have to kind of keep in mind that um, how, much ex how much choice can the person have, right? Like how many choices that we make will eventually lead into the same thing as well. I don't know, but I'm, I'm excited to see more about that. John Landau then took the stage, a uh, producer of the upcoming uh, film Alita, The Battle Angel, um, which was originally a James Cameron baby, and, and you know, still is, he produced it, but he originally wrote it and directed it, uh, but instead of directing Alita, he decided to go with a film called Avatar. Um, you know, so he's been working on this film for some time. Uh, Landau and Cameron had to find someone who'd be able to take on the project, and they chose Robert Rodriguez, who directed the film. Robert uh, was sure to tell the uh, crowd that he didn't rewrite Cameron's script. He simply just, oh, I'm sorry, Landau pointed out that Rodriguez did not rewrite Cameron's script. He just simply re-edited it, quote unquote. Um, so, you know, they were talking about James Cameron's influence and, and what they were expecting from this film. And they showed uh, some footage, which felt like an extended trailer. A lot of the things that you were seeing from, uh, you know, you've been seeing kind of circulating now. But then they showed two specific scenes. I'm going to break down those scenes, so of course, if you don't want to hear about that, fast forward a little bit. So the very first clip we got was uh, Alita waking up in a bed and discovering her new body. Now Landau and Rodriguez gave us some backstory that this was a, you know, obviously a robotic body, a mechanical body that was uh, Christoph Waltz had made for his daughter, who was a paraplegic, but unfortunately died before she got to implement it. So Alita wakes up. And the first thing that catches my eye are just how intense and vivid the imagery is. I mean, so visually stunning that looking at her face, you know, it's one of those moments where it could almost be real besides like the sides of her eyes, but every other texture on her face, everything else seems so real. Um, you know, she goes to the mirror and it kind of explores her body and, you know, is touching it and all that. There was nothing much... Uh, exciting happening. I mean, it was it was still a really good moment, but nothing much to describe besides her just kind of looking and reacting to her new body. The second clip uh, is from the trailer where Alita is dropping down that hole and rolls on like that pile of trash, and then she faces off with this really big guy. I don't know his name, uh, but he has these mechanical fingers that kind of drop down like Doc Ock, like like you know octopus metal. Uh, Clampers. I don't know what you would call that. Plus, guys, it's six in the morning, uh, uh, Friday after CinemaCon. CinemaCon ended last night. Uh, I had to go to the Avengers premiere, and I've been and I haven't slept, so I'm running on fumes here. Um, anyway, this this sequence was incredibly tense, and I mean, I'm telling you, the action just looks so flawless. It you know it really didn't shy away from the action. It wasn't cut too much. It was it let us really kind of focus on what was going on. There was a lot of slow motion moments. Uh, and again, the footage was jarring. I mean, the 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 
it was such a visual feast that I mean I was blown away while uh, I had heard about this film and I had heard about the following and that it will be good you know it you know it uh, sometimes you just kind of relate things to others and, and this was something that I wasn't sure if I was going to really dig into or buy into the hype and, but after seeing that footage I am really exciting excited sorry Next, George Tillman Jr. and Amanda Stenberg took the stage to discuss a new film called The Hate You Give. That's you, just the simple letter, uh, meaning, you know, if you write it out, the way they write it out is T-H-U-G, so thug, and then they fill out The Hate You Give. And, um, you know, Stenberg came out and said that she really hopes this story inspires others, like it inspired her. And... This is a very tense drama. Um, this looks like a very heavy, uh, compelling film about race and um, the relationship between police and African Americans. Uh, it seems that the film follows this girl who, uh, you know, both balances a, a private school life where she is surrounded by, um, you know, a, a bunch of a white kids and then she goes back into kind of her neighborhood where you know her roots are uh, according to her father in the film and um she's on a date and a cop pulls them over and uh the cop kills her boyfriend or friend and uh the film is about kind of the rise up and the claiming for uh for that um individual and it looks like this girl's journey accepting these two worlds and accepting how this world works and how she's going to herself um, handle all of this and where her loyalty lies and, and how she's going to accept who she is and accept how society is working in her opinion. So, I mean, it looks truly compelling. Uh, it looks heavy, uh, but looks like it's a movie that's going to really be rewarding on an emotional level. Um, then we went on and saw the footage for The Darkest Mind, which um, I saw the trailer today, actually. The tra well, I saw the footage at CinemaCon, and then tonight it debuted on top of In Avengers Infinity War, uh, which we also reviewed, so make sure to go check that out on YouTube. As well as all the other presentations, just click that white eye, if I haven't said it already. Um, I mean, this looks like a familiar young adult story. It's something that we've seen over and over again. The kids have you know the kids have developed something they have special powers they're segregated they all come together to fight this government organization that's trying to hold them back i mean it, we've seen it over and over again um honestly there's nothing that stood out in that trailer and even now i can't remember anything except all the kids are color-coded there's orange green blue and i think yellow um but i i really don't have anything nice to say about it um they were going so fast that i didn't actually get to tweet out about some of these films. I tweeted that we saw the footage for Widows, The Predator, and Bad Times at El Royale, uh, but I didn't get to really kind of talk about them. So, if you're here from Twitter, now you get some exclusive stuff on this YouTube channel. Widows looks like a very fun crime thriller in which uh, a group of thieves or, or members of a heist, uh, men are killed in battle, or I shouldn't say battle, but killed in their crime, and leaving their widows all in debt so uh, Liam Neeson is the leader of this heist group, it appears, and his wife is Viola Davis. So now Viola Davis is taking it upon herself to get the widows together to finish the job. And, uh, well, not much of the footage really stood out and, like, really captivated me of things visually. I think the story just sounds interesting. And Viola Davis is obviously top-notch as far as performance, so I think it looks like it could be really exciting. The Predator, I'm going to be honest because I knew some people were really looking forward to responses on the Predator footage. Uh, the Predator footage uh, takes place on Earth. Uh, Jacob Tremblay has ordered some things and inadvertently invites the Predators to Earth. And um, it, it just doesn't seem like it holds the Predator feel. Uh, you know, we're not in a jungle. We're not in like an outlandish place. Similar to Predator 2, I guess. Uh, you know, we're in kind of, we're, in, we're on Earth if I'm right, Predator 2 took place also on Earth. But this, just, you know, the Predator fighting people in different places, in a variety of different places. Again, nothing really stood out. And the way that the trailer began with Jake Tremblay playing with this remote that have would inadvertently uh, channeled them to Earth, 
I, I just was kind of confused by the tone and what they were going for. Uh, I'm sure the more that footage is released, because it was a pretty short uh, teaser, maybe my opinion will change on it, but as of right now, I'm in the skeptic range. However, I didn't feel skeptic about a film called Bad Times at El Royale, which did kind of look like, I saw some other critics saying it, looked like Hateful Eight in a, a motel. And it does. It looks like this very weird play where all these interesting characters, including Jeff Bridges, who is a priest or may not be a priest, uh, where John Hamm uh, is there, and all these people are looking for, uh, you know, um, either a hidden loot uh, there was a murder taking place and all of these characters kind of intertwining and trying to figure out who did what with with where and, and it looked like it's going to be all these characters and these really big characters too you know I mean not big as in larger than you know the very eccentric characters uh, conflicting uh, in this place last but not least 20th Century Fox concluded with a look at Bohemian Rhapsody now, this was footage that I think a lot of critics really wanted to see, including myself. Uh, producer Graham King took the stage and introduced uh, Rami Malek, uh, who is our Freddy. And, uh, you know, Malek came out and talked about how Freddie Mercury was the greatest performer that ever existed. And... Uh, you know, he said, I, I wrote a little bit what he said. I said, throughout, he said, throughout the film, you'll learn so much about, uh, it, you know, it, it fills it with pain and beauty, meaning the life of Freddie Mercury. Um, and that humanity gave me the strength to go day in and day out. You know, he was kind of just talking about the excruciating pain and, and, and hardship that Freddie Mercury had to go through through his life. Uh, but the humanity side of him and the humanity side of that um, legendary singer gave him the strength to finish the project. And, uh, you know, wow, easily one of my most anticipated films of the year. I mean, um, the footage looked unreal. Malik looked completely in his element as Freddie Mercury. Uh, unfortunately, it was like just constantly shots of concerts and them, you know, seeing Bohemian Rhapsody. And we didn't really get like a good moment of, of them interacting, but they were always singing. There was really quick shots along with the few Queen songs, of course, including the title song. Um, but overall, I mean, it looks like it's going to be, it's going to offer some, uh, Malik's performance look really rich and it appears that it's going to be a captivating biopic, uh, with obviously some amazing music. And, uh, to clarify, there was nothing about X-Men in the 20th Century Fox presentation. I got a lot of questions about that. Uh, unfortunately, every time I've gone to CinemaCon, everyone's always asked me about X-Men footage or what they're talking about with X-Men, and there usually isn't anything. So, you know, obviously they told us that the new mutants come out next year, but beyond that, there wasn't anything. That's going to wrap it up for the 20th Century Fox presentation. If you guys have any questions, if I went over anything and you want to ask me more things, about them, you could tweet me at Jacob Toronto, or you can, you know, go back and look at all my tweets from covering all the presentations. Of course, watch them on that white eye, or you could write in the comment sections below and I'll do my best to answer your question or address any concerns or, or thoughts that you have. Uh, guys, don't miss out on all the Chasing Sigma footage, interviews, presentations, it's a lot, as well as our review for uh, Avengers Infinity War. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jacob Toronto, and please continue Chasing Sigma.